Gandhi. That is that is a sorry state of fact. I feel sorry, but still, that is how the policy of this government in Tamil Nadu. Uh, so I am I am unfortunate. to know so i am not able to learn hindi you will not be able to understand hindi right no, definitely definitely because i have not i don't know the apc of hindi we have been prevented from learning hindi in tamil nadu okay one. then i speak in english that point please please and i speak some english good oh. and and slowly also slowly also <laughs> so that <laughs> we are all old you know that's very part <laughs> ma'am i should uh, one more like to all three of you Like uh, we would request you to, you know, in you in case you have any doubts between the session, uh, please DM us on the Zoom chat. Like either me or Aditi, please send the personal messages. Like that's a request. Ma'am, so we are starting it now. Uh, okay. Are you all comfortable? Yeah, Namaskar. yeah. Namaskar. 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 Okay. Um. A very good evening to all of you. I am Aditi Gupta, and I am Achira Jain. we are activity associate of the national service scheme iit bombay and the moderator of today's panel discussion we on the behalf of entire nss i bombay extend a warm welcome to all of you and you would like to begin by introducing all of you to our organization national service scheme iit bombay nss iit bombay being the largest student volunteer body is the most active and perseverant organization in the campus in the field of social or community service we provide opportunities to students to contribute their bit to the welfare of the society nss has departments spanning all avenues of community service right from educating the underprivileged to innovating solutions to social problems using technology Tomorrow, tomorrow as you know that is 6 september to 10 september zero waste week will be observed so i wish to tell you something about it zero waste week is an environmental campaign to reduce landfill waste it actively encourages people to reduce the use of synthetic materials and plastic packaging and promotes plastic reuse and conscientious recycling to reduce the amount of waste sent to landfill for incineration Zero waste weeks. Long term goals are to create long term change in people's habit, including generating more demand for sustainable products to lobby producers and to bring awareness for the need of good custodianship for the upcoming generation. Today, we all are gathered here at the commencement of Zero Waste Week to have a vibrant discussion on the topic. innovation in sustainability and waste management with our eminent speakers through this panel discussion we aim to develop an awareness about the among the audience regarding the strides made in the field of sustainable development you will also come across some unique and innovative ways in which you can lead your lives sustainably and practice waste management more effectively at the individual level Now we would like to introduce you to the panelist. The first panelist of the session is Dr. Janak Palta Matbegan. She is an active social worker and has been felicitated with the fourth highest civilian award of India, that is Padma Shri. Ma'am, we welcome you to this session, and may I request you to kindly address the audience and let us all know about your journey in India. Thank you so much for inviting me, and I have the honor to be with Dr. Uh, Vasudevan and Sumaira Ji, and all of you. Uh, first thing I want to say, we are you are asking me to talk about waste management. I start with the you are talking about treating the symptoms, but I will start with having a life. not to generate waste 
that is better than generating the waste and then managing the waste and spending a lot of money, energy, and polluting a lot. I just uh, start with this uh, because of my uh, personal living style and my work 37 years in sustainable development, training of rural and tribal girls, 500 uh, villages, 6,000 girls went trained to, to work as sustainable human resources for their own community development from tribal villages of uh, central India villages. And after that, I took retirement. My husband and I both worked for the Burley Development Institute for Rural Women. And we have been both followers of Baha'i faith. And we believe that the purpose of our life is to sustain ourselves, our family, and community to lead a life. Now, uh, I understand the purpose of life itself is very valuable, and we have a duration and time of living life on this earth. So, first thing is why should we waste even a minute of our life? not wasting time. Number two, not wasting our energy. Number three, not wasting our, our heritage, whatever we received from our ancestors. And God has created us to, to take care and guard his other creations. He has created human beings with power of rationale and soul so that we take care of humanity. We live in harmony with all, all the human beings, animal kingdom, vegetation, life behind minerals and five elements of God. And I will, I will explain my sustainable development in two sentences. I have redefined sustainable development as Vishwa ka kalyan karna hai Think globe by thinking globally and act locally. Number two, pranyo me sadbhavna se jina hai. This is my definition. We human beings are supposed to look after ourselves with love and harmony, and not to harm any creations of God. So I give you small examples of uh, my concept of tenable. You call it waste management. But my first thing is, I do not consider anything waste in my life. There is no thing which is waste. I'll give you examples of small changes that everybody can do. First example is, I have this small cloth bag, reusable bag. It has all the things to keep my things. I keep a reusable steel bottle I keep a small glass, which prevents me of using any plastic served in plastic, the, the ski, uh, paper cups or any kind of disposable. Yeah. I will die but not eat anything or serve anything to anybody in this. I use, I make my own pass. I don't use any tissue paper. I have a handkerchief and for anything, this is not a waste. This is my this is my phone holder. It is made out of a piece of the thing that that is collected from my house, and uh, it's it's my phone stand. So I don't have to buy things and waste things, and then people collect the waste. So I have been a brand ambassador of making indoor the cleanest city of India. This is my fifth year. One of the one of the thing everywhere they have advertised in my with my photo is reusable thala, reusable bag. And another thing is reusing, I'm not talking of not wasting water, not wasting Mother Earth by putting chemicals, chemicals, and chemicals in the soil. And we are not wasting, we are destroying, we ran out of season because we cut down a lot of trees for development. So we need to plant more trees. I'm going to vaccination centers to encourage people gifting a tree for the, and they are planting. I have done 21,000 last two months 
to increase the number of vaccination entries. Tomorrow, there is a 226th death anniversary of Devi Ahilya Bai of Indore, who is the mother of this uh, city. I am going to go to a village and plant 226 trees in her memory planted by the village people. We don't have to waste this wood, you know. We are making smoke out of burning, wasting important oxygen-giving plants. I promote solar cookers. I, I gave my LPG subsidy to Modi ji when he asked for it. My gas cylinder changes in two years and five months. And I eat what I grow. I have a half an acre farm and I live on it. I, it's a cow-centered farm. I only buy salt, sugar, tea leaves and cooking oil. That also as best as possible is the organic. I do not buy anything. The more we shop out with plastic bags. So that's one thing. Second is, you know, people launch the books and so much trash and so much packaging, gift. So I am also encouraged sustainable events and sustainable marriages. There have been weddings. Shadi me kachara nahi karna or shadi ka kachara nahi karna. To not to waste your marriage, married life and not to Waste, generate waste in your wedding event, religious ceremonies, not to pollute the water by uh, putting the, uh, you know, murtis, Ganesha murti, and they're full of chemicals. We all know we have gone through COVID. So I, I personally feel that these are very small things. We can change our life and we can save the planet and the people by small practices. If everybody does a small practices every day, we can we can really really save the world and the planet and it's just not possible unless we are at our peace with our own body mind and soul so these people in kabul we know what is happening they are they are wasting their own life and they are wasting the humanity they are killing people human beings are not here to kill Human beings are to live and let others live. So we should not waste our life in, in creating violence, killing people, destroying environment, destroying habitat. Then we get corona. Then we get global change. Then we get floods. Then we get droughts. And we get everything. All we need to know is not to generate waste and have a zero waste life. There is no trash bin in my life for the last 37 years. Thank you so much. It's been very inspiring. And, you know, like we all are awestruck by knowing that the kind of life that you are living, you know, like, no, you do not generate waste. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm quite inspired and I hope the entire audience is inspired by your, uh, you know, uh, the mantra that you gave that, why to do waste management? It's better not to produce waste. So it's it's great pleasure to have you here, ma'am. Thank you so much. Now, uh, I would like to introduce you all with our second panelist, Ms. Samaira Abdul Ali. She is a renowned environmentalist and is popularly addressed as Minister of Noise. Ma'am, it's, pleasure, it's our pleasure to have you at the event. We welcome you to the event. And may I now request you to kindly address the audience and let us also know about your journey. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm extremely happy to be here speaking to all of you. Um, my journey started about maybe 20 years ago when I never believed I would be an environmentalist. Uh, but I started working on noise and also on sand mining because sand was being taken away from the beach near a place where I grew up and I knew I had to do something. At that time, people laughed at me for taking up either of these two subjects because they said in a country like India, these are not relevant issues at all. So far as noise goes, they, people said they love noise and uh, they didn't think it was something to control, which has been proved otherwise now. But so far as sand goes, it, it was even more interesting because they said, Sand is not an issue because there's plenty of sand. 
On the other hand, they said, if you complain about sand mining, we'll attack you, we'll beat you up. And I was attacked twice, nearly killed the second time, hospitalized the first time. And I realized that these two things don't make sense, that on the one hand, it's a non-issue. And on the other hand, someone is willing to kill you to stop you from speaking up. So I started to find out more. And that led me to my work, uh, to my knowledge of, about sand, making sand more known as, a, as the most used material in the world after water, the second most used material and the most extracted mineral in the world because it's used for everything that surrounds us. You know, cement concrete is made of sand, glass, computers, you name it, it's all made of sand. And we think it's cheap, it's plentiful, it's, it's available. Our roads are made of sand, which brings us to the synergy that we have in this panel, that one of the solutions to, because people in the big 20 years ago, when they asked me, what's the solution to sand mining? Nobody knew. They said, without sand, the world will stop. But, you know, 40 years ago, they said that about coal and oil. But today we know it doesn't stop. You can, you can find technological solutions, alternatives. And we have here with us, and I won't speak him, so I won't say too much, somebody who has worked on solutions using plastic, which can substitute sand and other aggregate materials in a large way. Uh, there are, of course, many other ways of substituting sand. I had the honor to present it at the UN, and the UN, who had not heard of sand, had their very first roundtable in 2018 on sand. And so I'm very keen to speak to you about construction and demolition waste and the other types of substitute to sand. The plastic substitutes, I think I'll leave to the more uh, people who have actually done hands-on work here, someone who's coming up next. So thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Mom, it's very inspiring to know about your struggles. And yeah, we learned a lot about how we can use sand in our lives. Thank you so much, Ma'am. Moving to our final panelist, we have Dr. Raj Kupalan Basudevan with us. He is an Indian scientist and also Padma Shri recipient. He discovered an innovative me method to use plastic to generate ropes. Uh, sir is popularly known as the Plastic Man of India. So we welcome you to this panel discussion. May I request you to please address the audience and let us know about your journey in India. Haribo, 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 Abaskar. My uh, pronouns to Mekhiligan, I hope I pronounced them properly, and uh, Abdullahi for their uh, wonderful contribution for the better world. That is very important. Today, being a teacher's day, I would like to pay my pronouns to my greatest teacher of the world, Lord Sri Krishna, who gave the Bhagavad Gita for the betterment of the world. If one follows the word of uh, Lord Krishna, there cannot be anything like anything, any such mission or uh, uh, webinar like this, such a, or panel like that. Very important. So I just say a few minutes about myself and then the topic and then my work. Because I, have, I feel though myself and the magazine are living the same uh, tuning, rather to be tuned ourselves the same uh, phase, but still there is some small difference because of the little difference of work in the work in the field we are doing it. But I would like to add something to that. I am a simple teacher only. I am a chemistry teacher in an engineering college, Tharadar College, Engineering College. Uh, I started my career in 1972 as a teacher. I continue to be a teacher in the college. I am working as a dean by God's grace at the age of 77. And still they keep me in the college for the, because of their grace and God blessing something. So as a chemist, I, I, I'm, I'm interested uh, to do something definitely. And we observe our world, outer world. I, I I I don't I don't say innovation. I I say innovation. Indian way of doing something different is very important. Because the world can't do anything, but is it useful for my for my people, for my own people who are underprivileged? I say who have not gotten the knowledge for that. So what to do? In 2000, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm doing my research in In 2000, uh, uh, the town, uh, 20, uh, there was a fear of ban of plastic uh, in Tamil Nadu. And uh, I come to know that one lakh people will lose the job. 
seven hundred seven thousand factories would be closed. I thought we must do something in this aspect. I just started. What we best we can do the plastic. Plastic is a, a byproduct of petroleum only, and uh, vitamin or the tar is also a byproduct. These two can be mixed. Family members only they are same family members mix. When I mix, I get a new product of vitamin which can be used for road laying. At that time, with God's blessing, I had a great meeting of our late president Abdul Abdul Kalam. He said, "It was given. You have done a great thing. It is going to be the great breakthrough in the sir in the work of um, road laying." He said, "That is a vision and blessing." And today I am before you is because of the great uh, visionary um, Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam, great person who who practices Bhagavad Gita in his life. I would put it that way. That so I started the work. And it started from subsequent day. Find out this is a very useful material, and plastic can be used for road laying. And I will I will talk about the road laying technology later because that is the most interesting aspect about that. So this how when a car comes to the society, we try to know something too, and that has now developed into such a great process. Today, India is the as we did late two thousand. Two lakh kilometers of plastic road. All the broader roads are being road plastic road, and uh, the need of plastic is enormously increased. I will come to that later part. So, but what I want, my basically, what is sustainable? Living together as for uh, Magali and so living together with the world is very important. There are eighty-four lakh living beings in the world. Only one is a human being. He is a representative of God. He is an ambassador. He has to take care of the whole world. And the whole world, the nature gives you food. The nature gives you oxygen. Nature gives you whatever you want. Is it not a responsibility to take care of that? Who is taking care of my parents? Are taking care of it? My care to them. Nature is taking care of me. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita said, "Sagaya gya praja shrista puro vaja praja budhi ane na prasham shritam yasho ista kamadu devan bhave de devo bhave yanta ha parasparam bhave yanta ha se ka pramta ha." You have been created along the along the world. It is your duty duty to take care of them. If you take that way, the world will be a karma to you. Whatever you want to give, so be a friend to the nature. Environmental friendliness is very important. That is a rule. That is a coexistence. That is sustainability. Sustainability is not a new word. Lord Krishna has told already about that. In uh, so five thousand years back, he has told sustainability is the most important. Which you have not understood, which you have not are off late, we have followed. We have not followed properly. More than that, so we, now I, I just move that way. Therefore, all this is stepping stone. Now coming to the plastic. See, we put our living happily up to World War. After the World War, suddenly there is a rush of technology. There is a rush of material requirement, and when material requirement. Deforestation takes place, land grabbing takes place, all type of environmental hazard exploitation taking place. God fell. Yada yada ki dharma se kani bhavdu. Abhyukta na madar masse tadatmanam sujhamiya. God fell. I must come to the rescue of the plant. I must not for the human being because human being is exploiting. I must go. So he said, I will introduce a new product, plastic. He said, I say plastic is a God's gift. He has given it by you. Now, for as a structural material, plastic is displaced wood, displaced metal, displaced glass, displaced all natural materials have been now displaced by that. Safeguarding the nature is being done by the plastic. So, uh, plastic has become a poor man's need, common man's friend, and a rich man's possession. Now, if you visit a village, if you visit a hut, you see, you can you can see the hut, the people is having. Plastic bag, plastic bucket, plastic mat, plastic everything. They take it the food and they carry back. It has become cart and parcel of living. That is that the affordability is there. They can't have it is the affordability has been made so easy by the because of plastic. And today we sell. We are looking at each other because of the computer. Everything plastic. So plastic has become very handy, very useful, and very a friendly need is a friendly need. Now, but we suddenly now say ban the plastic. Therefore, I say not to ban, but to plan. It is it is a plan that is very important. What? Why I say? I give another another example. What is the what do you say waste? Is there any waste? There is, is there any waste in Bhagavad Gita? He says, Maya adakshena prakriti 
Suya says, Hasadara, both living and loving has been created by me. See, Lord Krishna says, I have created it. So anything which you say, if you say it's a um, waste, it is not you who created it. He has created it. When he created it, it cannot be a waste. It can only be a resource. Kindly follow my argument. Very simple. When God has created something, it cannot be a waste. It is only a resource. Just because I do not know how to use it, I call it a waste. In, in your food, if anybody put it some food, some uh, vegetable which you don't like, you say it is a waste. It is, it is liked by somebody else. Therefore, nothing is waste in the world. Nothing is waste. Everything is God's creation. You, the individual, you, the man, who has been provided all the intelligence, try to understand and try to find a use for that. You can't do it. That is the most important. That, that's all. Bija Maham Nan, he says, I am, the, I am the seed. So God creation, nothing, man cannot create anything without God's wish. So God created. But what for? That is what we need to That is an opportunity. That is an opportunity given to you. Think about it. Now coming to my work in this direction. So plastic is, uh, therefore, pe people said it is to be bad. What's, what, what happened? When plastic is a substitute wood, plastic is able to give better uh, better efficiency, energy, everything is everything is plastic. Because your use, your construction, engineering construction, your domestic appliance, everything comes to plastic. Because man's habit is bad. Man's habit of throw away, use and throw away. He simply throws away different corners. That has created all problems with respect to congregation, congregation of water, etc. Therefore, if the habit, if the habit of the man is is refined, if he's able to collect the plastic properly, I mean, there is enormous use of the plastic. You know, plastic, plastic is a very useful material according to me. What is that? See, what what I do is simple. Plastic, you take the stone. The road is made of plastic. As I say, the road is made of uh, stone and tar or bitumen. You heat the stone, add the bitumen, mix it for the road. Then what I now do is take the stone, add the plastic which you call, the waste plastic which you call, the carry bag, the multi-layer packet, the chocolate bag, the uh, biscuit packet. You also cut it into small pieces. Put it on the stone, it gets laminated. Now I add bitumen. You get a beautiful road. See here, I'm having it. This, this, this plastic, which has got so beautiful a binding property, is a 10 times stronger than concrete. So plastic is better than cement. It can be used for developing many structural materials. It can use for road. It can do it for house construction. There's roof for toilet, toilet construction. So don't see a plastic as an appliance. Now see a plastic as a adhesive as a material which can be used for construction cloth material. This I call plaster. This has been patented. We have started industry. Many people of whole world is after this straw material and plastering you. Now coming to the road making, the road which has been laid using plastic has not more than 15 years. There is no pothole. There is no car car cracks, anything. That is the only drawback because contractors say we want we don't want this 15 years road, only one year road. So that but actually roads are wonderful. And India has got 46 lakhs kilometers of road. I need 200 lakhs tons of waste plastic. India has got only 10 lakhs. What I need 200 lakhs. India got 10 lakhs. Just 10% of the plastic. All the plastic available in India can be used for laying only 10% of the road. Remember that. So what amount of plastic do I? So plastic is not a waste. So don't contaminate plastic. It is a very useful material. Understand that. Now when I come to the plaster, this is again 10 times more. Another 200 to 300 tons required. On the whole, I need about 500 lakhs tons of plastic. For, the, for making road and other material. India has got a meager quantity of 10 lakhs. And that 10 lakhs, we makes you go oh, eyesore and other things, we condemn. So please, let us say no to plastic pollution. Let us say yes to plastic. So plastic is the most useful material. And the need of the plastic, the road which has been, which has been laid 
in various in 12 states of india are all performing very well and uh, the, uh, the the border road artists are related to me sir who are workers and very friendly and very useful they are able to see that what god has given a, a beautiful idea of using a plastic for road so plastic before uh, waste before throwing away it was useful after throwing give it to me it becomes a road or a structural material a toilet i i can construct a toilet using plastic in two hours and the cost about just 12000 rupees whereas concrete is 20000 Please. Therefore, plastic becomes a very handy. Then, what is the problem with plastic? It is only the problem of the human. Our own problem. We don't have a proper garbage culture. See, I I don't use a ballpoint pen. I use only pen. Ballpoint pen, you know, one one month only you can use. How do you throw away every year? I mean, nearly more than one lakh ballpoint pen are on the road. If you use a pen, there is no question of throwing away. So, what is to be used? What is not to be used? How to reduce? Try to understand. Or face or brush, you know, the brush which you use. If that every three months you are changing it, and each one is eighty gram. If you throw away eighty thousand, the 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 eighty eighty lakh tons food it is containing. Now, what I suggesting is, why not have two the two pieces? The head is separate and the bottom is stem is separate. The head can be fixed. Your brush can be fixed, and the bottom can be. If you could do that, you can definitely save seventy percent of the plastic. This is how to do that. So reduce is something different. Reuse something different. For example, <coughs> your uh, uh, chocolate paper or uh, from plastic um, the biscuit paper, which are multi-layer, metalized layer, which cannot be recycled. But if I use a road, it is the best road of the lot. Therefore, you have a use. That's why I say nothing is waste. Everything is a road. God has given another material now. Your roads are now giving a pothole. Normal roads have become pothole road, and it becomes crack. It gives it. It gives way for so many accidents. Don't please bother. I I give a new road. God say I give a new road. That is called plastic road. Fifteen years, no problem. Leave here because I say fifteen years because I laid the road in two thousand seven two till today. The roads are performing well. Are more than more than since fifteen years. I don't know what is the road. And we have developed. Many such technology, many new products and products. Therefore, what I say, I understand. I need more, more of plastic. So don't say no. You reduce the use. That's something different. But the bottle can be converted into my shirt. The bottle can be converted by plaster. And that, that what I say. Every everything which is having the world has got a better use, provided you understand the use. It you have a fascination to that. You have a mind to do that. Each one may have different. Now. I my God should be use plastic. Other man can find out other using. Already I am using fifty uh, industrial waste to convert into product in my laboratory. Therefore, there is no waste. Therefore, remember sustainability is nothing but quad in coordination with the people, living in coordination with the nature. People and nature should coordinate. So now you say waste is creating a problem. Why the waste comes? Because of man's garbage culture. Man's Selfishness. Nature gives what you need, what were not for the greed. You are selfish nature. Again, and get sick, touch, and get out. But then there is a certain kind of pressure to do it. Because of selfishness, you become the thief. You become a, a puppy here. Therefore, let them, let us, every one of us understand. Let us try to work for them. As Madam said beautifully, we, our every minute of our life should be used for the service, service for the sacrifice and service, the way of life to travel inwardly. Beautifully, Magdalene has told service. How to serve? Each one can serve differently. According to me, there is no waste. Every waste is God's creation for the betterment of society. Try to find out its use, and you can definitely make wonderful products. And therefore, plastic is not a waste. Please kindly change your your awareness about that. Plastic is the most useful plastic, which can make the structure of the whole world. We are able to produce bullet-free houses. Yeah, it's quick with standing houses using plastic. Therefore, plastic is not a waste. Let us try to understand. Let us improve our garbage. The most important problem today is how to how to collect the garbage. See, the manufacturers manufacture the material, supplies the market, it and forget it. Then the manufacturer never thinks about what happened to the product, what has affected society. Nothing. He never had. You know, the circular economy is not there. And I use the plastic and. Uh, To put it there uh, the, the, on the road, never bothers. And then the municipality collects and dumps it. 
the circular economy is not there. Bhagavad Gita Axel said, Annad Bhavandi Bhudani Bhajan Nyadanda Sambhoga. It usually, man's need is by, it's satisfied by, by his man's right living. Remember, I put it, man's need is satisfied by his right living. By having a right living, we have a better, a better material. You get the rain, you get everything, and nature produces everything, you can again live. This is the circular economy. So you cater the need of the society. You cater the need of the plant kingdom. You be friendly, eco-friendly. Your biodiversity is taken care of. When you do that, no problem. Therefore, the whole problem of plastic is man-made problem, man's carelessness. Let us be careful and care, more careful in this aspect to avoid throwing on the roadway, but collecting properly. The industry should take the responsibility of collection. Every bid, every house, I go to the students, school students, talk to the students, kindly get the plastic. I collect it and then shed it, give it to the road making. I talk to the people, the hotel people, ask them to collect. It is, a, it is a responsibility of the individual or institution and the government to collect the plastic and give it to the proper place where it can be effectively used and it can give you a better life, better load. All the village roads, if you are burned plastic word, India will have a, a smart villages and smart cities. Let us understand that. I probably I'm taking more time than the other two because I want to convey myself. That is, let us understand the reality and try to propagate the right information. See, when I show one finger to you, three fingers are throwing me. Similarly, plastic, when you say plastic waste, it says you are the responsible of that. Therefore, let us not be like that. Let us try to understand that we are responsible for the use the plastic, dispose it properly, make it useful again, instead of throwing away all the waste. Therefore, this is the most important message I would like to say. And therefore, plastic. Now, in fact, uh, our madam has put COVID is a messenger. I don't say COVID is a pandemic. It is a messenger. It has made all the man to, shift, to be arrested, house arrest. Because of the COVID, you have been house arrested. And the factories are closed. Transportation is stopped. Environment better. You have air, air get purified, water get purified, salt waste has been reduced. All those things because of COVID. That was some, the pandemic has made a student understand this fellow man should sit inside the house, understand what mistake I have done. It is a time has been given to understand. Let us try to understand. Let us understand how to live in this world properly in coincidence, in the sustainable way, so that we'll be more useful. We'll be when we become more useful to society, you are become more useful to yourself. As a man, your evolution from animal man to man, you can go to God man. But divine quality can be brought out in this process. So use yourself to become useful to others so that you'll be better for that. Thank you very much. for uh, Though I have a long speech, I feel it is more important for the two great persons who are hearing me. And they hope they will take the message. People can send also, I hope. Thank you very much. Thank you, NID, uh, IIT, uh, IIT Bombay, where I had a earlier a, a chance of meeting the student which was wonderful. I have attended many meetings, many addresses, but once as but there I could see the intelligence of the world students where they could do a lot of things. But I don't know what has happened subsequently. I'm always ready to interact with the, all the students anytime in the world and time, until God gives me a time to, to interact. Let us work together for the betterment of India. India has got all the wealth. Nothing is lost. So our mythology, our, uh, our if I go to that part, it is still going to become a long speech. Everything available. I sit on a, 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 a gold mine and, and begging others. Open your move a chair and sit down. You have gold mine. Similarly, Indian culture, Indian mythology, Indian weather, as all the knowledge required, try to understand. I said touch only Bhagavad Gita process, but still let us understand and see, let us live as in India. India has got a different culture. It is a culture of coexistence. It's a culture of living together, carrying all our function, all our religion. Even Ganpati Puja is a, is a modified Puja. What is the Ganpati Puja? Is meant? Who is Ganapati? So understand what a message has been given to that. The performance ritualistic as we are not talking about it, but it gives a great message of the people concerned. Therefore, let us pray the same Ganpati to give a better life to the people, to understand sustainability about that. To understand about the and the uh, circular economy and make India better. Thank you very much for the IIT NSO organization.
thank you so much sir we are really you know like i'm shocked to see all three of your energy your motives your passion towards your work and you know like you have been consistently working in this field and you know you have established milestones so that's something which we all should learn from you all so uh, i would agree that you know like what is sustainability it's living in coordination and as sir said that you know plastic is not a waste it's wrong disposal it's a, a careless you know uh, handling that makes plastic a waste and nothing is waste over here so i hope sir everyone is you know like quite enthusiastic about the panel discussion that's going to start now and uh, so we um, we are about to begin the panel discussion i hope the energy of the all of the three speakers have must energized you all and uh, so yeah so with the permission of all the three speakers present here so we would like to begin the panel discussion so maybe of course yes please <laughs> um, okay yeah. so I, I, it's really good for that uh, we have a great experience uh, by the three two great people who have done a lot of work in this side that i would like to get their view about my because my view is not that it is god's view actually plastic is not a waste if you understand there is no problem if you have our see i just had one one extra center when i was standing in a, a, a ranchi the airport i for a boy for boarding another another plane one japanese girl was wandering here and there with a chocolate paper in her hand i was just observing her she was running here and there finally when she found a dustbin she was so happy let us try to have that type of attitude i feel uh, we need to propagate the, the regular proper culture garbage culture among the people the, for example in the sea you have got maximum plastic people say who has thrown it the, the, the fish never smoke the greatest contamination of the sea debris is cigarette butts and next comes bottle next comes carry bag is it the is it the um, material used by the fish man this is indiscriminately about that he simply throws away let us start out create a people please the so called education is not that education is something different you are qualified you are not educated let us understand the real education and meet the people concerned send them a message for to have a proper garbage culture that make that is was a spur what is a spur is only to create a sesper and if you understand sesper make in india come i feel proud i have developed by the grace of god something new where all the world is actually 300 million dollars is offered to me by the america to take this my technology i said no i am giving to my country free that's what that is the spirit we need to work so i hope this i i would like to have the views of our panelists in this process yes so i would like to begin like as i said that you know sustainability the concept of sustainability is you know was given by lord krishna like 5000 years ago so yeah we all agree to it but if we talk about the uh, coinage of the term sustainability when it was introduced back in 1987 it was officially you know defined as the human ability to ensure that, that the current development meets the needs of the present without compromising uh, the ability of future generations to meet their own needs so but with time and along with the advent of technology the scope as well as the reach of the concept of sustainability and sustainable development has increased manifolds so like we want to take what's your take basically on how the notion of sustainability has evolved with time as in the kind of uh you know changes that you saw happening in your uh, experience like what's according to you that how sustainability has evolved with time can i say i mean whom are you asking the question to i mean it's a general question so yeah we uh, like all three of you can put your views on the same well i would just like to say that Yeah, we started with the concept of sustainability thousands of years ago and india has traditionally recycled almost everything 
you know, we grew up recycling our clothes, uh, uh, giving them to somebody, reusing them. Uh, our newspapers, of course, all our buttons, everything. The guy used to come home and we would recycle them. In fact, we never threw away anything. But as Western culture came to India, we did start throwing away. So it's not just plastic. We've been throwing away things because we think we are trying to be like the West. And maybe they didn't have the same concepts we have. And we have forgotten some of the traditional knowledge that we have. But it's a good thing now that at least we are talking about it. And I feel that while we are sitting here telling you guys what sustainability is, I think really the time has come when you can teach us because our generation, my generation, has forgotten. And you, perhaps because of the thing that the, you know, the, the I mean, when my daughter started going to college, I know she was so proud of wearing recycled shoes. It was a badge of honor, you know, that I don't wear, uh, you know, I don't wear things which are not sustainable. And it's becoming more and more so. I spoke about how when I was young, we were taught that the world will stop without coal and oil, but how people came about with new solutions. So the first thing you need to do is define the problem. I think the problem, one of the major reasons we have found ourselves in this place is that we have just gone so quickly ahead that we have forgotten to stop and think what we're actually doing, you know, to, to get a lifestyle which is not sustainable. And garbage is just one problem among a larger problem. The latest one, some of the latest UN reports of two, uh, 2021 tell us that every issue is interconnected. So you can't talk of garbage without talking of air pollution. You can't talk of air pollution without talking of water pollution. Um, you know, as he said, that the, the plastic is in the ocean. So you can't talk of anything thing without talking of anything, everything else, including COVID, because COVID is a disease which has come about because of our unsustainable lifestyles, because of the way we have cut down forests. So I feel this, that if COVID has given us a lesson that we can use to go back and think what recycling really means, use every resource that we have. I talked of sand mining. You know, sand is something, it's free. Everybody knows it's lying there. Somebody who has the strength and power can just go get it. You don't have to make anything. But yet it, it's a, the resource for making our entire built civilization, cement, concrete, as I mentioned, everything else. If we can use the, the what we have, you know, the huge resources in terms of intellectual capacity that we have. I'm talking to students of IIT Bombay, which is our premier institution. Indians are known to be... Uh, innovative, have been able to do things which the rest of the world follows. Plastic roads is one of them, but there are so many others I can name. We are te teaching the world how to use solar energy, for example. If we can use things like that to find new and in innovative solutions across the board, and we can have young people who will drive those solutions because they understand the problem, they have the technology, the technology is constantly evolving and changing. After some time, at least for me, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a techn technical person, but I know that I can say this, but I can't execute it because I don't have the know-how, but you guys can. So all it's my, my job, our job, my generation's job to put that seed in your mind that this is not the world you have to live in. You don't have to live with air pollution and water pollution and garbage and noise pollution and all the rest of it. You can do something about it. You don't have to become an environmentalist and sacrifice your life if you don't want to. You can be what you are now. You can be a lawyer. You can be an engineer. You can be a communicator. You can be anything you want. You still live in this world. You still contribute, good or bad. So let it be for good, not for bad. Uh, I, I want to say something about waste. Uh, I think I have already said that uh, one of the major thing is that we have a limited life on this earth. Our duration of life is fixed. Maybe it's like a you know phone recharging. There is a, a data and it finishes and it cannot be there is a validity and the recharging so all of us come with everything 
uh, programmed and we have a limited life but our role is unlimited as human being we have the biggest responsibility now uh, i am talking i have talked and shared with you some of the examples of sustainable living i am telling you very simple uh, question asking you a simple question do we ever think that we have a great imagination if you go to any party any wedding any event and there is a dinner or lunch served you can see how much food we take on the plate and how much we can actually eat this is lack of imagination greed satisfying our five senses our eyes and then we can't eat it wasting food wasting water you know such a small thing uh, I, i i want to tell you that uh, i was telling you about organic farming and growing natural food and this just just half an acre of land i'm self sufficient in food for myself i'm self sufficient for energy in in the in the solar energy solar cooking even the even the food of cow is cooked on the solar cooker 300 days we have solar energy india is the luckiest person i am not talking of photovoltaic power system because photovoltaic power cannot run without batteries and creating more and more carbon also but solar cookers are direct cooking with sun if if in india like we had an institute where my husband built the first solar kitchen of central india and that kitchen had been cooking for 100 students tribal girls who were living there and saving 900 kilos of wood and nine gas cylinders in a month so imagine if i am if there are people who finish these are lpg is going to finish and it's becoming more and more expensive petrol rate is rising diesel rate is rising lpg rate will rise how long we are going to live how long is going to be there but sun no, nobody can stop the sun shining 300 days in india at least i'm talking of the area which have which have sunshine there are tribal women who have taken solar cooker to their villages they are saying that the you cannot imagine that the solar cooker of 10000 rupees can cook food for at least 15 years without costing anything and the women told us that their dignity is saved they are subject to sexual harassment the number of rapes conducted on the women going to deep long forest for getting wood for and the domestic pollution is a cause of one of the major climatic change and global warming do we connect with it can we connect the technology solar cooker and dignity of a woman a woman who is carrying loads of wood on her head on the advanced pregnancy she miscarries her child she loses her child the number of women the number of infant mortality and female mortality because of just domestic pollution my husband and i always say that cooking in smoky kitchens is a violence against women do we ever think that we can use solar cookers in the sunny areas can we create i have a small wind wind pen wind well so i am able to give out of just 2 kilowatt 19 street lights to 50 tribal families in my neighborhood free of cost and it the this wind well is going on whenever there is wind i am on a little hill top so hilly areas we can have more uh, windy areas we can use wind doesn't cost there are people they make they made livelihood there are women who take a solar cooker and run a solar tea stall the even a male member is an entrepreneur he is making solar tea tea with the solar cooker 
getting 1400 rupees in 4 hours of sunny eating then he uses lpg second time when there is no this thing so whatever we have i think if we can use it best how to use resources with a with the spiritual responsibility of not wasting not wasting life of people how many people have died because we lost oxygen because we polluted so much and we cut so many trees for development and we did not grow any trees so this is one part of using natural resources the farmers in india were committing suicide because they could not they could not learn or they did not have the technology to process their perishable food like bananas chikus papaya grapes my husband developed a simple solar dryer for 15 the first day he mr james magilligan who was obe by the queen of england for these kind of services he did in india he lived with me all his life he said he was wasting his life in uk because they were overproducing and they were dumping food in the in the milk and the beef in the sea and and he was wasting his skill how not to waste your skills he came to india and he utilized his skill to develop technologies innovate now the farmers he innovated a small solar dryer you put the grapes in a solar dryer costing not more than 15000 rupees and in 4 days you get raisins you get kishmish you keep uh, banana chips you have dry fruit you have dry fruit of all the perishable things you dry your tomatoes you dry your spices you dry your Uh, haldi you dry you you know this all these uh, things that baba ramdev ji has been talking about immune system i am growing lemon grass and tulsi and i have it for round the year whenever there is season or out season my my nephews and nieces in canada and australia get this supply for one year whenever they come to india because they can't get it there it doesn't cost me extra but we need to learn i have i have trained some startups some interns who are working only in the area of sustainable development or not generating waste or managing household wet waste and how they have made indore as the cleaner city of india by waste management iit students of indore they learned they were they were they were motivated for this and made a group they made a company called swaha and they are creating they are they generate they made some vehicles on the site they take the waste food from hotels and uh, resorts and they generate fertilizer by composting so we need to have more youths going in the, for these professions you know technology technology should not uh, should not destroy the environment heritage peace of mind and love and health of the people health of the planet i have also been invited to un and i am still working with un for sustainable development goals i was there you can watch my videos on the un when i spoke about these subjects that how we can save this country uh, even now we have so much of fear of third wave of covid but i think people in kabul are not afraid of anything who are playing with guns we all of us learn to see that we have come to this world to bring peace love harmony with people and nature so i think small small innovations like composting we uh, i want to tell you smallest example of uh, when we have uh, sunshine we cook with solar cooker i have solar kitchen solar cookers but during rainy days my husband developed the small bricking machine to use use newspapers old newspapers and any old used papers to convert them into briquet and it which is almost smoke free briquets to use in rain times or whenever there is cloudy weather we can't get sunshine so uh, there there were 
I want to tell you when we when we come over here in our institute, the tribal girls about hundred we had in one 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 session of six months. They used to save their fallen hair to use to make a batik brush for waxing, which is bought for fifty rupees, made of horse hair of the horse. So even one fallen hair should not go to drain. and choke all the pipes this is something i am i am living and i am training people without taking any fees i don't take any funding i don't have a program i don't promote myself if people who want to learn they come to me and i train them to how we can live without generating waste just to look at the at the sunny side and just to see how i i want to be in peace with my own self i'm yeah. sure when we create when it smells bad you go through a dead cow or a dead bird i think we we may only think of fruit trees for human beings we don't think of having a tree where peacocks sit where birds sit sit and where butterflies come we have to think about every human, every living being even the earth is a living being the soil the amount of chemicals in the food the amount of adulteration in the food the amount of wastage of food every day i think we need to learn amount of water how one drop of water is precious in our life we need to learn to live without generating waste yes. thank you so much Sure. So, so we would like to have, yeah, your views as well. And ma'am, it was like really, really inspiring. So, sir, uh, maybe request you to put your views on how the notion of sustainability has changed with time or evolved with time. I must say. Are you asking me? Yes, sir. Uh, now the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. Sure. Yeah. so uh, like what how will you describe you know the notion of sustainability how has uh, the concept of sustainability changed with time evolved with time uh, it is a word for sustainable but the way the way of living is eco friendly and uh, environment friendly you must always anything that we have we discovered or innovated be nature love and therefore we were was we must always think that is whether we are going along with the nature or not don't create against the nature that creates a problem and the young students can do one perfect work therefore you the students can change it because your vision is different from from my vision your passion to you identify your passion i just add one more incident here a 10th class student five students came to me So I want to join in your work. I said, "What you can do here? For some help, please give me. We are we are very very happy to join with you." What I did was I gave him the keys of the keyboard of the computer and asked them to find out powder. Get me the powder of this. It is a e waste. I can find out some use. They tried to crush it. They did all method for two days. They tried. Nothing has happened. Then what? Really, finally, what they did know? They sat on the floor, the concrete floor, rubbed it on the floor for two, three days. Got fifty grams of the powder, and that powder I used. I made a polymer modified pretty bit. I got forty-six lakh grams. These students all because of the five students who has got the idea of innovation. So that is the innovation. I think something something very big. is too small but still it is useful very important that for the iit students madras you are fly high i don't know that but come down come down to the lower level come to understand the common man's uh, difficulties see i i have another incident is from madhya pradesh 20 people came to me they said we don't have a current and we are not able to crush beet in the powder we travel 30 40 kilometers to the town to get it can we make some difference we are only uh, crushing it by hand i made a small change the crushing machine by adding some 
uh, there is pulleys I had, pulleys I had it, and if you uh, if you rotate once, it will rotate ten times. And they were very happy. They were able to make good good good, good work about the whole powder. The powder becomes very easy. Therefore, it is not it is the it is involvement at the time of requirement, and that is what we need. So you all who are knowledge of IIT with so much of information put in. come down and try to understand the problems of india and try to develop innovation more than innovation thank you sir it is very nice to know your views and how you all mentioned that how we traditionally live and helps us in uh, managing our life and doing sustainable living um, i appreciate this uh, moving on to next question so you mentioned that uh, the garbage culture is not developed in india like i want to know what we can do on a personal level and what a waste management council can do to develop this garbage culture shall i uh, shall i say i mean it's to all three of us whom are whom are you asking the question to mom it is general no, question yeah Yeah. Okay. So let me just start with the uh, garbage in Mumbai because that's where I live and that's where IIT Bombay is. I know that there are people here who have been working for decades. With there's Jyoti Mapsekar, if you know how she's been working for at least thirty five years with waste pick pickers, women in particular who segregate garbage. But the reason that this has to be done is that we don't segregate our garbage. when we do the bmc mixes it back up and puts it in the into trucks and sends it to the landfill i spoke of the connection between garbage and air pollution um i measured air pollution you know when when the garbage dump at devnar burned in 2016 it was seen in nasa images from space and 70 schools of mumbai had to shut down that's the kind of problem we have the garbage dump is 100 feet high and it has uh, you know it it's certainly the largest in india and it's in, within city limits i have spoken to people who live there and who have been suffering over years and no one listens to them the problem is one it's the problem is twofold you are talking of behavioral change and behavioral change doesn't happen overnight behavioral change involves changing the behavior of people everyday people teaching them how to segregate waste it also involves teaching the people who will collect the garbage and it involves training the people who are going to make the policies related to that garbage to make implementable policies we have privatized some part of our garbage collection system and that has created um, groups if you want to call them cartels who actually have a particular interest in keeping the garbage management system not working well and the only way that you can make behavioral change in the long run is for people to stand up and ask for that behavior and that requires people with a multidisciplinary approach and therefore in my when i spoke last i said that you engineering has a crucial role to play but there's also a role for communication for policy making for politicians bureaucrats for ordinary people across every field um there are mothers who are impacted by air pollution created by garbage there are people whose lives are being shortened because of burning plastic in these wastes i mean the plastic can be used so beautifully but actually it's being set on fire on every road side around mumbai so there's a there's a need to come together to come together with people across the board you need lawyers to make the policy you need all kinds of people and i think this is really what is needed you're talking of behavioral change that's a social science and that has to be put together with the engineering skills to make the the engineering skills useful and usable by ordinary people so that's what i have to say so you want to mention something about how we can yeah i just sorry i just had one word i i mentioned how my daughter was so happy to use recycle to make recycled clothes you know uh today 
you can't have certain things on the red carpet anymore. Fashion choices have been dictated by young people's awareness about cruelty to animals, just as an example. When young people become aware that garbage and plastic and things need to be recycled and they take pride in doing this recycling, that's when we're going to see the real behavioral change that we need. And they have to educate us today. That's true, ma'am. That it's like a greater onus lies on the young generation to take this concept forward. So, Sadly, yeah. that is true because we're leaving you with this kind of terrible mess and saying clean it up in your own interest, which is not the message I want to give you, but it's nevertheless true that you will inherit this world, you will live in it, and therefore you will become the policy makers, the politicians. So whatever may be our shortcomings now, you have the opportunity to take it further and make sure. And, you know, young people these days, they are leading the change. Even in India, they are the ones who are stepping up through online platforms, through whatever way, creating the demand to be heard, to have a better world To You know, and we are simply kind of there to, to you know, fill in the gaps. But they are leading it and it's going to be more and more and that's how it should be. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh Janak, ma'am, like, yes. what's your view on the garbage culture, which Vasudevan sir mentioned in, you know, in his earlier thoughts? He said that, you know, the garbage culture is not there in India. So what's your take that how can uh, we, you know, inculcate these things? See, this is what I have been I have been saying that don't make garbage of our life. Don't garbage your time. Don't garbage your uh, lifestyle. Don't garbage your water. Don't garbage your food uh, by using disposable plastics and uh, more and more packaging and waste of food. And uh, we can keep our surroundings clean and we can keep our, you know, our... We are answerable to God, accountable to God. Our soul should also be clean. It's not garbage. It's not just outside of paper and plastic. It's also how we, how we even jealousy, even, you know, garbage is uh, greed and stealing and uh, violence and harming each other. We should be helpful to each other. We should work together as human beings and we should take care of the people who are not who are not physically in a position to help and if we have extra food we should give it to people who need food rather than wasting and making it a garbage and if we have enough water and the ne next door people don't have enough water we should we should share so we can become caring and sharing with what we have with each other we can cooperate and rather than you know, uh, competing with each other and creating garbage. We should we should not compete. We should try to collaborate. I don't think competing for bad things is better uh, than collaborating together to work for a good cause. Yeah, sure, ma'am. That's that's really inspiring. That we should collaborate and you know bring a great change in the society. And yeah, again, the role of the students is where it comes. So yeah, thank you for that. And if so, I if I am good, I am good at something, and I should teach others when they want to learn. I don't preach, but I. Okay. I think there is some internet glitch. Uh, in the meantime, I would ask Sir if they can share if we can share their thoughts about this thing that how we can uh, develop garbage culture in India. Well, it starts from the individual, right? Not like that. Yes. Uh, it, it starts from the yeah, individual. Sure. Anybody is uh, giving us the, the, the teaching how to brush your teeth. Anybody is uh, teaching you how to wash your hand after food, it comes as a habit. 
So garbage culture has become become as a habit. So it is to be taught from the, the from the start from the young age itself. So what is to be as the madam has rightly put, first don't develop garbage. Then if it all that is the case, it try to it can be used as a dispose properly. If then only you can keep it separate. I will now put it garbage is to be separated so that it can be converted to useful product. There is no waste in the process. So that type of culture has been inculcated in the mind of the people, younger generation. I can only put it only in younger generation. I talk to the uh, school students. I see there is a difference of school students also. There is government school. There is a private school. There is a sophisticated school. I go to the government school and talk to them. They are very passionate to care about me. Whereas the students of higher level, higher of sophistication. they don't have that much of a involvement this is an attitude therefore i feel everybody must be given a knowledge how what is the importance of materials and the way of living life is very important life is beautiful make it useful sincerity in the work faith in god take you beyond limitation these are a culture to be developed so it is not a just like program just like a Or to prevent COVID, have a mouth of mouth mask and like that. It is not that it is to be it can to come automatically from the growth. So everybody has to be inculcated. You should form a total lesson for your life in the education system itself. I feel how that which culture to be developed. So I feel that way. It, we have we, it was there. It was there in our life hundred years back. Now, as Madam put it, Western cultures have entered into us. And all our culture, corporate culture, has been spoiled. In my house, when I was like you in my in my young days, I, my house they don't throw anything house in. Everything they find out is some use and then put it in a particular place so that it will be used at a at a suitable time. Only now we change, take a chocolate, throw away. Take a pen, throw away. This is a new culture developed. So you can create such awareness, importance about the culture, the young generation itself. School education should should impart about this more. I don't want computer education. I I want more about the garbage culture education. Okay. Yes, sir. Sure. So that was you know like interacting with all three of you was quite quite amazing for all of us, and I think it it was also amazing for the audience as well. so we would love to you know we would have loved to interact with you more and more on these topics but you know if we have got some time constraints as well so basically with this you know the discussion we got to know a lot of things when you know like that sustainable development is in today's context is not just limited to saving resources it's more like it's more it has got a more wide view of saving lives as well and uh, the uh, onus of saving the environment making sustainable choices lies more on the student community now and the young generation so that we can you know do something that our future generations might not get this kind of environment and then one thing that all three of them said equally was that nothing is waste you you cannot manage to waste your life i think is waste it's how it's the way you use it's your uh, irresponsible ways that make certain things waste and it's just god's grace that we have been given things by god and nothing is waste so yeah we would like to uh, and now we would uh, ask that i mean we would have some questions from the audience there are a lot of questions from them their side as well but again due to the time constraint we won't be able to address all of them so yeah here are a few of them so i would request aditi to to go ahead with it yes sir so i am having the question for you sir uh, the person is asking the reason why plastic people use plastic in scale is due to availability and affordability shouldn't there be any systematic intervention to curb the production of plastic and incentivize sustainable products please be, be repeat it or make it clear for me to understand question please the it is that uh, the people use plastic in scale it is due to its availability and affordability 
but shouldn't we there any systematic intervention to curb the production of plastic and incentivize sustainable products still still i am unable to understand the question please 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 sorry sorry because some some communication gap uh, uh basically sir they want to know ki if what they there want, is they, an, what they, what they what they want what they want what is the question uh that shouldn't be there any systematic intervention to curb the production of plastic and incentivize sustainable uh, products uh, So there is no need to uh, reduce the production of plastic. Plastic is very important. It is going to be the uh, future way of life. In fact, uh, uh, I have come across one of the uh, important lectures from one of the Bombay, Bombay University professor. Using plastic, they are going to make many medicines also. So this is going to be very important. Therefore, the, the, I told you plastic. I say, I say, what is Say, produce more plastic. Give it to me. I make the world. What I have only not even ten percent. So use him this properly. I, the, the question should reflect what is the question reflects is. I will not change my. I will not change my hab, uh, habit. I will not have a proper garbage collection. I will reduce it. No, please think about it. It is useful to all. Therefore, use it properly. Dispose it properly. Don't curb the production of plastic. It is impossible. I say ban plastic is impossible. I get plastic every day because it is it has become a part and parcel of the day to day life. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yes. Ma'am, uh, we have one more question for you, Samaira, so, ma'am. That as resources are limited, right, and we are exploiting. at a very bad rate you know at very increasing rate we are exploiting these resources so basically the question is that how to maintain balance of resources for better future lives well i think this is a discussion which is a global discussion now uh, how to maintain balance of resources because our population is such that that balance has to balance our needs as well as with the needs of nature and the planet so that we don't make the world unlivable and you know have pandemics and other reasons other ways of annihilating ourselves um we are a species like every other species and we need the world to live in to be sustainable at the same time our expectations of the kind of lifestyles we want to live have changed dramatically over the last few hundred years uh, we have you know we want many more things in our lives and we want convenience we want quick solutions to everything and these two things don't go together and in fact they are different for every person you speak to the people on the this panel my the two other panelists are very up, uh, are leaders in the thought field of of not using things i know of recycling of reusing not everyone thinks that way and to find con- common ground across everybody i think is the challenge of our times and that's why i go back again to saying that we need communications we need to find ways of reducing what we use um maybe we don't need to make those lakhs of kilometers of roads if they go through national parks and they go to maybe we can do with a lesser amount of roads and balance the plastic that we need for those roads and for other uses maybe we don't need uh you know cheap clothes which we wear three times and throw away or even one time and throw away and make a cult out of how we never wear the same thing twice which my generation has done as a matter of pride but maybe we make it a matter of pride that actually i wear the same thing until it tears you know maybe these are again behavioral changes and i don't know where the optimum balance is i i i don't profess to to be god i know everything have all the answers i think the answers will, will evolve but certainly it's necessary to find that balance and again that balance where it is lies today where it lay 50 years ago where it's going to lie 50 years from now is going to keep changing and hopefully we'll keep on top of it in a better way than what we're doing now because now we're just talking of catching up you know we need these things this is this this is the position we need these things and the few people who do without are the exemption 
they they people everyone will admire and look for but they will also say but i can't live like that so the point is really find that balance which most people can live with and aspire to which they are capable of living with and where their peer group makes it a point of honor that this is the way we live yeah sure ma'am so like it's basically cannot be you know imposed on someone we have to you know uh, like inculcate this thing in our behavior and we should take pride in the kind of sustainable practices that we should follow we are following so that people get inspired with us and yeah we are thing that you do whether it's saving a drop of water is better than not saving that water i'm not saying yeah. that saving one drop of water is going to save the planet but maybe it will plant the seed where the next person next time you take an action will be a slightly bigger action and that yeah. people who don't qualify don't uh, count themselves as being environmentally friendly at all maybe maybe they wear recycled clothes or they make recycled roads because it's cool to do that you know because yeah. their friends say oh this is a great thing you've done you know when the fashion houses chanel and all those other people decided not to have say fur coats or not to have you know when when brands like the body shop came about saying we don't practice cruelty to animals that became the selling point and that's what we need yeah yeah sure ma'am we get your point and uh, i hope the entire audience is you know ready to make these things look cool so that the people are ready to follow all these things so thank you so much so we are not we won't be able to address any further questions for the same so, so with I, this i will i would like to just say yeah, yeah, idea is the question send it, send it to my i will okay. answer the question also you can send sure, all the sir. questions they are they can send it to the mail to me and bad sir sure sir yeah sure no sir and me too i mean anything that they can people can call me they can follow me on social media they can whatever but i'm here okay that's that's so great of you so with this we are at the last part of this session so yeah aditi please go ahead um i would request a uh, on the panelists to add some concluding remarks so maya ma'am please add some concluding remarks some concluding remarks well i mean i'm so honored to be here speaking to all of you who are going to you know come out with those solutions i'm tagging the problems i'm telling you these are the problems and i know that some of the solutions i mean when you look at the kind of startups that are for example there i mean i feel so uh, humbled <laughs> because they know they have yeah you guys have the answers and i think i'm learning from you so thank you for being there thank you for taking it forward and i hope that we haven't messed up the world to such an extent that you can't retrieve it i'm sure you can so i think that would be my and please please feel free to be in touch as i said social media email whatever whatsapp whatever thank you thank you so much ma'am for inspiring the audience uh we don't have janak ma'am with us right now i think she is having some connectivity issues so uh may i request uh, rajgopalan vasudevan sir to kindly give his concluding remarks for the same so we request you to kindly give your concluding remarks sir uh, are we audible am i audible yes please yeah Don't sir uh, uh, we uh, request uh, uh, you please 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 proceed yeah so uh, sir we request you to kindly give the concluding remarks for the session ah uh, i am very happy that i am addressing the students of iit bombay uh, plus please, please work for the betterment of the country please have a passion for your country design whatever you design for the betterment of the life design and reorganize yourself and adjust your living for the betterment of everybody's life 
It is not your life is important. The other says life is more important. If you take care of others, God will take care of you. Therefore, let us work together for the betterment of the betterment of ourselves, betterment of India, and betterment of the world. We show all the best. Thank you, Thank so, you much, so much, sir. sir. It's very nice. So, uh, with this, we are at the closure of this session. Uh, we would like we would like to thank the guests for sparing their valuable time and. Uh, we would also like to thank the audience for being a part of this event, showing enthusiasm for sustainability and for being patient listeners and learners. We hope you all will continue to follow the sustainable practices in your daily life as in much more effective way and also will motivate the people around you to follow the same. With this positive note, I end this session. For further updates about our work, we would request you to stay tuned with us through our YouTube channel and do not for forget to follow us on Instagram to be a part of the social cause that we are working for. The links for all the social media handles will be provided in the chat section. Also, uh, a feedback form is floated in the chat. So we would request you to kindly fill that up because uh, so that you are eligible for the certificate. So with this note, we swear to you know live sustainably we swear to you know motivate people around us and uh, have sustainable life and sustainable practice sustainable living so with this positive note we finally end this session thank you so much everyone namaskar namaskar, namaskar. thank you thank you namaskar madam namaskar madam thank you namaskar. Namaskar. the great opportunity to interact with you two people also namaskar yes. namaskar, namaskar.